It's the NFL on EA Sports, and if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Birds and the Buccaneers, and it's coming up next on Madden NFL 25. Well, the Florida humidity is certain to be a factor in this one. There's no other way to say it, really. It is hot. It is humid here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Tampa. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Bucs get ready to go on offense for the first time, and it's Baker Mayfield leading him out in his second season as a Buccaneer at his seventh overall. And he had a most impressive bounce-back season last year, nearly leading his team to the NFC Championship game. That's not something you see every day, and he was rewarded for it as Tampa Bay decided to make him definitely their quarterback for the future. Now for him, he wants to prove it's not a one-year thing, and in fact, he is the long-term answer for this franchise. A first carry for Rashad White, and yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. In motion left, Godwin. Throwing Mayfield. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Here's Mayfield. He'll dump this one off here to White. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical it would be this easy. But they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Evans comes in motion right. Mayfield. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Mayfield to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. Well, only their first drive, Charles, but they talked to us about needing to convert on third down, in particular not letting third and short opportunities slip through their fingers. Well, they were successful right there. It also tells you that they're successful on first and second down as well to get to third and manageable and make them able to pick up those first downs. Now here we are, first and goal. They've got to like what they're doing on this drive. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. Fourth down now looming after Philly's defense stands tall in coverage. Boy, such a good drive. You'd hate to have it end in three. Do you think about going for it? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that they've moved the ball so well should lead you to the decision that maybe we should go for it right here. Also, as a head coach, show some confidence in your team. Look. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Bucs' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Many would call that a gutsy decision here early on to go for it fourth and goal. There was no hesitation. Field goal unit never sniffed the field. It was a message. And the message was, I trust you on offense. Go out and make this happen. Go ahead and pick it up. You know what else he said? I trust my defense as well. They don't get it. I know you're going to hold them. So it's a message to your entire team that you believe in them. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out come the Eagles for the first time, and the man in charge at quarterback in his fifth year now, Jalen Hurts. He's coming off a season where he certainly experienced his fair share of ups and downs. On the positive side, he threw for career highs in passing yards and touchdowns. On the negative side, he threw the most interceptions in his career, and his team struggled and collapsed down the stretch. If he can get back to playing mistake-free football without sacrificing his aggressiveness, this team can get back to competing for a Super Bowl berth. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Second and a couple. They run with a dangerous Saquon Barkley. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues 
find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. Hurt sets up to throw it. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. A first down carry for Barkley. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. Here's second and 10. Throwing from the gun. It's Hurts. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 26. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Here's Hurts to throw. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Second and 10. Throwing his hurts. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 15-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Ball at the six here as they work with a second and two. And the slot man goes in motion left. And they'll get it forward to him on the touch pass. What right, a great read by the secondary. They come up to stop that touch pass before it can even get back to the line. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. The defensive coordinators love that. You got a cornerback willing to stick his nose in there, come up on run support, and stop that pop pass dead in its tracks. And, partner, one good thing about trying to defend that play you should see it coming the whole way. You see the receiver coming in motion in your direction. Nice job eluding the blocker, making the play behind the line of scrimmage, but an even better job studying the play before you have to try and defend it in a game. Well, Brandon, obviously no panic in them. They gave up the touchdown. You know, their defensive side did that, but he's already taken them back downfield. I love this field general that they've got. It's almost like he went to the defensive captain and said, don't worry about it. We've got you. Yeah. Now they got first and goal. Yeah, we're seeing punch, counter punch. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts finding A.J. Brown. And the Eagles respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. But down here, I thought they were going to hand that off. Instead, a well-designed play and the pitch and catch for the touchdown. And I wonder who came up with it. Was it a call from the bench? Did the quarterback have a good idea and suggest it? In any event, clearly an effective play call. They saw something they liked in coverage, and they targeted it for the short yardage throw. And the perfect way to cap their opening drive. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's capped off by an A.J. Brown touchdown. Yeah. 
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Mayfield off the play fake. Open man, it's Palmer. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second down and six now. Mayfield now to Evans on the slam. And Evans will have a Bucks first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. 7-7, seven, seven, our score after one. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football. So from the 36 now, first and 10, as they've got it as we resume action. To throw, Mayfield. Out route, and the ball is caught by Godwin. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Godwin with a nice grab there, and he's been a consistent weapon for this Buccaneers offense, although a bit unheralded. He's eclipsed the 1,000-yard mark for each of his last three seasons, and his ability to make plays on all three levels is invaluable for not just his franchise, but his quarterback, Baker Mayfield. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. They go play action. Mayfield got his man complete over the middle. That's Palmer. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. Another nice play there. They've gotten down into the red zone in no time at all. That's what this offense can do when they get on a roll. And now they're set up with a first and 10. First down. Here's White. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Now second and nine. They keep it on the ground, wide again. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. Yeah, he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. And no field goal try here from the red zone. Offense out there, they'll go for it on fourth. Mayfield looks to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Trey Palmer 
from three yards out. And the Bucs have taken the lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Hurts. This short throw caught by Goddard. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Out of the shotgun, they run with Barkley. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Seven yards there and a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. They keep it with Barkley on first down. And he's across the 45. It'll be second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. They'll look to throw here. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 43. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. From the gun, it's Hurts. But it's caught on the right side, it's Smith. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That'll give him eight that time. And yeah, that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. And the challenge flag is out. Todd Bowles not pleased with the ruling on the field. And he's going to ask the officials to take another look. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. 
but even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down and two. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And Devontae going to pick up the Eagles first down as he'll get the ball down inside the 30. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Back to throw again. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. So second and long and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Another try after the first down sack. Hurts. This one goes out wide for Barkley. It'll go as a gain of four. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. We've hit the two-minute mark in the second quarter, 14 to 7. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Over the middle, complete. It's Brown. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes. You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Looking to throw again on second down. Hurts. And he's got his man in stride, complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Jalen Hurts, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. After nearly 30 minutes of football, that touchdown puts us in a position where if they make the extra point, we're right back to even before we start the second half. Elliott on for the extra point. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards.
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Well, the Bucks going to take over now late in this first half as they will take over here with a little more than 30 seconds remaining. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Mayfield. He's got White here. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. From the gun, Mayfield. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Now a second and ten. Here's Mayfield. That's over the middle and caught by the rookie. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Final play of the half, Mayfield. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They are all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Uh, here's a fake on the jet sweep as he'll go instead with Barkley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Coming in to put a lick on it was Levante David. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Running again with Barkley on second down. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. Those are the type of runs that we did not see from him in the first half, but a good start to the third quarter. And I know what everyone's thinking that's watching this. They did a great job adjusting at the half. Oftentimes, you don't make adjustments. You just dial into your game plan a little bit better, and maybe they're starting to make some headway. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard.
from the 48-yard line. Here's second down at a yard. Hurt sets up to throw it. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. First target, first catch, and a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. They'll give it to Barkley off the option play. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Second and six. Throwing from the gun. It's Hurts. He dumps it off to Barkley. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Short completion, just four yards. And now one yard to go on third down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Back to Gainwell here on second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Third down and 13. Throwing his hurts. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Remember, Brandon, he ran for a touchdown earlier, so his decision to go ahead and tuck it and go again turned out to be a wise one. And the decision is what is important here. He has made some good decisions on when to tuck it and go. In motion right is Smith. Here's Hurts to throw to Barkley on the check down. So the completion good for seven there, and it'll be second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. To throw again on second down. Hurts. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. And the Eagles are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Well, he'd had success earlier in the drive keeping it himself. Not here, though. And sometimes when you have that kind of success, you can fall in love with the option a little bit too much and not give the defense credit for making adjustments themselves. And that play starts to lose its effectiveness. 
Second down and goal. Hurts. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Now we got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? This is caught. They do get eight out of the pitch and catch, however... It's fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. They have stopped him in his tracks. The kick by Elliott is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. Well, they don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Buccaneers' offense and Baker Mayfield set to take over once more. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense. And that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And he'll be tackled at the 45 following a gain of just two. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here is third and five. In motion left goes a tight end. Throwing, Mayfield. Dancing to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Palmer going to go in motion left. Mayfield down. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, 
but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. So first and 10 now from the 30. White, he'll try the left side. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. 58 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. They've done a pretty good job containing him up until this drive and until that run. There was no containing him at all. Yeah, you're right about that. He finally popped free. But we didn't have to be in their practice sessions. We didn't have to be in their meeting rooms. They planned for a run like that to happen, maybe a couple of them. But what did they tell their guys all week? You know what they said. Move on to the next play. That one just happened. Let it go. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. White will score. Touchdown, Buccaneers. And this is a time of game where offensive lines can really dictate a team's fortunes. It's been a tough battle. They've been out there for a long time. But this was a question of who can wear down who. And that's excellent work to put a long drive together and finish it with the touchdown run to take the lead. McLaughlin for the extra point. It's up and good to make it 21-17. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He'll drop it off with Saquon Barkley. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, well, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. The Eagles on third down. They've been excellent. Six for seven. This time it's third and three. They'll set up to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have an Eagles first down. And he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. On first down, he'll drop to throw. This is Smith with a grab. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 
23 yards on the play. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. From the 25, here's second and a couple. Hurts. Buying time to his left. And Hurts able to show off some of that elusiveness as he slides to the ground there and in the process picks up the first down. Give him seven on the tuck and run and it'll get him a new set of downs. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart. Took it himself, found a way to reset the downs and advance the ball. Got a man, it's Brown. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. They'll try and run for it with Barkley. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Now they'll send a tight end in motion left. Barkley again. And this time he'll get down close to the goal line, but not quite in as he stopped at the one-yard line. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Now they'll bring one of their tight ends in motion right. Third and goal, option right. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Eagles answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He completes it right side away. 
No gain, and it's second down. Now, they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. And now a tough spot here. This is third and ten. Mayfield looks to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here we go. This is fourth down. Desperation time. Mayfield on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bucs try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. So the failure to convert, no doubt, really hurts. But this one's not over. A good chunk of time on the clock and the timeouts. Yeah, not only do they have the timeouts, as you just noted, they're going to get an extra one with the two-minute warning. And that's going to help them big way. So in a sense, they have four timeouts in their pocket. The big thing stopping them on defense now. They can't let them get a first down and make them use their timeouts and get a fresh set of downs. They've got to stop them right here. And if so, they've still got an opportunity. Running left, it's Barkley. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. And for the defense, this is a spot where you don't want to totally sell out to stop the run, but you do have a pretty good idea of what you're going to see. And that's good work right there to keep them in check on that first down carry. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. And quickly we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Barkley will take this one in for an Eagles touchdown. And just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come and have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance blocking and getting their runner across the goal line. Elliott now to add the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Just a four-play drive that time. And it ends with a Saquon Barkley touchdown run.
Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Oh, some strong running. And they're going to have good starting field position. He's out of bounds, but not before he's across the 35. So Mayfield and the Bucks down by 10. A minute 44 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Mayfield. Throw right side, take it in by Godwin. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Here's second down and three. Mayfield. Looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Mayfield the throw. Left side here. That's complete to Godwin. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Now Mayfield. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. A big play in this football game. Third down and one. Here's Baker. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Just a difficult situation to be in here in the final minute. Down two scores. You know you need some providence from somewhere. They're going to keep firing away till the end, but this one falls incomplete. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to get it back to a one-score game. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And this is back down to a seven-point game. So they hadn't called on him at all until this point, but he comes through here and buries one from long range. Yeah, that's awfully impressive because usually kickers like to get that first one out of their system in the first quarter, sort of get them into the flow of the game. But to come in this late and knock it down from long distance, give him a lot of credit. So still a little over 40 seconds to go. Time enough to put a drive together if they can get this onside kick. And it looks like the defense has got it. A big mistake in that spot. You got to let it go, Tim. They didn't give themselves a chance. They had an opportunity, touched it first. Now they're in a really bad spot. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Down to an ego's hurts, and that is going to be that. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, 
Oh, how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level from both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high flying, but they took care of the ball. Yeah, they did, and just keeping it clean in a game like this with all these points, you don't see that very often, even at the highest level. Job well done by both sides. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.